Hey, y'all. Welcome to another We Go podcast YouTube video, aka What Else is Going On with Taria S. Faison. I'm your girl, Taria. Make sure, please, that you like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. I would appreciate it so, so, so much for those of you that have subscribed. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support coming over here and playing around with me in these YouTube streets. Also, you can subscribe to the audio version of what else is going on podcast episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. Just had an episode drop today with my girl, L Mirasaki, who is also on YouTube. And we just had a good for my soul. Like it was just needed, like a sister to sister chat we had. So I hope that y'all will enjoy it. So please head over to wherever you find your podcast, Apple, Spotify, Amazon podcast, all that good stuff. Type in what else is going on with Taria S. Faison or just what else is going on and you'll find me. You'll see the picture of me. You could also go to my Instagram bio, uh, my Instagram at WeGo, W-E-I-G-O podcast. If you click on that link, whatever type of phone you have, it'll take you to a platform where you can listen to the podcast. So if you have an iPhone, it'll automatically take you to iTunes. If you have an Android, it'll take you to wherever it is that uh, their podcast platforms, whatever type of phone uh, you have. Like I said, it'll take you to that platform. So y'all, I came upon these subjects last night and I was like, I got to get on and have a conversation with the people. So let's talk about it. First of all, we talked about Bruno Mars yesterday, allegedly owing $50 million. So now MGM has come out and said false. That is not true. So let's get into it. MGM denies claim Bruno Mars has debt with Casino. Any speculation otherwise is completely false. MGM Resorts came to Bruno Mars' defense on Monday after rumors circulated about the Grammy winner's debt with the casino. In the last week, a reporter from News Nation made claims that Mars had racked up over $50 million in gambling at MGM. They cited an anonymous source close to the situation that said Mars allegedly made $90 million a year through his residencies at MGM, but was using a large chunk of that profit to pay off his gambling debt. He will only make $1.5 million per night after taxes, the report claimed. MGM basically owns him, they added. A spokesperson for MGM Resorts International tells Variety that these allegations are completely false as Mars has no debt with MGM. We're proud of our relationship with Bruno Mars, one of the world's most thrilling and dynamic performers, they wrote in a statement. From his shows at Dolby Live at Park MGM to the new Peaky Rink Lounge at the Bellagio, which I do want to check out, Bruno's band of entertainment attracts visitors from around the globe. Bruno's brand, I'm sorry, of entertainment attracts visitors from around the globe. MGM and Bruno's partnership is long lasting and rooted in mutual respect. Any speculation otherwise is completely false. He has no debt with MGM. Together, we are excited to continue creating unforgettable experiences for our guests. Representatives for Mars declined Variety's request for comment and redirected the inquiry at MGM's previous statement. So... The people at MGM have said it is unequivocally false. Bruno owes us no money. Bruno owes MGM no money. Does he owe the Bellagio? Just saying, because isn't that inside? His pinky ring is inside the Bellagio hotel, right? Those are different hotels, right? Does he owe somebody else? It's just wild to think that somebody, I mean, we know that people will come out we're in a time where people will come out and make stuff up and some people will believe it. Some people won't. And some people just won't care. It's scary that someone can put out information that may be completely false and people believe it. But I, I do have to wonder, like, why would somebody just come out of the blue and say this? Like why? Um, Uncle Shay Shay uh, was recording with Chad. Ocho Cinco wanted me every every single time. Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco wanted me. But Chad was recording with Ocho and said that a high roller said that they sat next to Bruno Mars when he lost $17 million in one sitting. That's alleged, but that's what this high roller said. I don't know. I feel like Again, maybe it's not with MGM. Maybe it's with, maybe he owes another casino. I don't know, but 
we shall see. I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to provide I promise you, my phone don't ring like this. And then as soon as I sit down to record, it wants to ring. But anyway, I wanted to provide uh, updated information to what we talked about yesterday. Now, let's get into something else. According to Radar Online, RuPaul's Drag Race star Shangela accused of SA by five alleged victims in bombshell expose. Shout out to Carlos Harris, uh, my boo, who sent this to me. And I just was like, wow. 2024 is shaping up to be some type of year. We're only in March. RuPaul's Drag Race star Shangela is facing more essay allegations. Five accusers have come forward to claim the infamous drag queen, whose real name is Darius Pierce, allegedly committed actual crimes against them. RadarOnline.com has learned. This comes just one month after our exclusive report that another alleged victim, Daniel McGarrigal, agreed to dismiss the lawsuit he brought against the superstar. A jaw-dropping expose was published on Monday, this past Monday, yesterday, detailing the disturbing new accusations against Shangela in which several people claim they were too intoxicated to consent to actual relations with the mega persona. A fifth person claimed the television personality, 45, tried to penetrate, penetrate them in a bathroom closet anally. Rolling, St Rolling Stone spoke to the new accusers after uncovering a shocking police complaint that had previously gone undetected. Five individuals recalled their time with Shangela, claiming the alleged assaults happened when they were between the ages of 18 and 23 and spanned from Louisiana, Texas, California, and the United Kingdom from 2020 to 2018. Shangela admitted to meeting four of the five accusers, but maintained his innocence against the crimes. He said he did not remember the fifth alleged victim. Rolling Stone published, second, let me pop up here. Rolling Stone published the accusations from Shangela's five accusers after a 16 month investigation. Let me say that again. Rolling Stone published the accusations from Shangela's five accusers after a 16-month investigation. The drag race star denied the allegations in a letter issued by his lawyer, Andrew Brettler, who called the claims false and unsupported by any evidence or reliable witness testimony, adding that there were significant problems with purported accusers' accounts. Shangela's attorney also stated that his client adamantly denies ever engaging in non-consensual X. RadarOnline.com told you first, McGarrigal agreed to dismiss his lawsuit last month after claiming Shangela aired him in a hotel room after a rap party for HBO's We're Here in 2020. The accuser served as a production assistant on the show. McGarrigal was disoriented from the high that he was experiencing from the poppers and the fear that overcame him during the actual assault. The lawsuit read, Shangela overpowered McGarrigal and was able to hold him down. Shangela fiercely denied the allegations, calling the lawsuit meritless, while claiming it promoted damaging stereotypes that were harmful to the LGBTQ plus community. I can't begin to explain how hurt and disgusted I am by these totally untrue allegations. HBO investigated McGarrigal's accusations, but could not corroborate the claims. Buckingham and HBO take the safety and well-being of personal, I'm sorry, of personnel on our shows very seriously and Buckingham immediately launched an investigation when the incident was reported to them July of 2021. An HBO spokesperson said the investigation concluded that there was insufficient evidence to support these allegations. Shangela was eliminated early on from Drag Race during season two before returning to other franchise installments. The over-the-top personality also appeared alongside Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper in A Star is Born and Dancing with the Stars. So more accusers have come out. I just, it is so much going on in, not even going on in 2024. We know that so much has gone on, but it seems like it's being revealed in 2024. Again, this is all alleged. We just have to see how this all plays out. Moving on to a little bit of Bravo info. Let's talk about Mr. Mauricio. I am going to be watching his show. And I'm going to recap 
uh, some of it with uh, my girl Stacy. So I am excited for y'all to see that. So let's get into it. Reality blurb. Mauricio Umansky addresses Kyle Richards' claim of losing trust and Paris Hilton's diss, plus why it seems he's sharing more details of marital drama on buying Beverly Hills than R-H-O-B-H. Moransky, Morans Mauricio. Mauricio Umansky is opening up about the claims Kyle Richards made in regard to losing trust in him on the recently aired Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion. After Kyle, 55, was seen admitting that the many cheating rumors she heard about Mauricio had chipped away at her over the years and led to insecurities, Mauricio shared his thoughts on her revelation as he also reacted to claims of having hidden their marital drama on RHOBH weighed in on Paris Hilton, calling him out and said he deserved to be made partner at Rick Hilton's real estate firm. I don't know what that is, Mauricio admitted to Entertainment Tonight of his estranged wife's concerns on March 18th. All I can tell you is that at the end of the day, we were married for 29 years. We met when we were kids. I think we've been open and honest, and I think people need to quit looking for what I always say, tits on an ant. But an ant does have tits, right? So that's it. Now I want to Google because I don't know. Anyway, although he and Kyle have accused, although he and Kyle have been accused of showing more of their marriage drama on buying Beverly Hills than RHOBH, Mauricio said it is not fair to compare because RHOBH is a completely different dynamic. I'm working with these three girls all day long. I spend so much time and so many hours with them. So not only am I working with them, but I'm also seeing them at home. And so the conversations are ha that are happening are totally different. He explained giving a nod to stepdaughter Farah and daughters Alexia and Sophia who work with him at the agency. There was also the matter of timing, particularly in our situation. We were in the middle of rolling when all of this stuff happened with Kyle and I and the news broke and the discussions we were having housewives really wasn't so not so not super fair for people to say that about the housewives in my opinion. When Mauricio was then asked about his end goal for his situation with Kyle, he couldn't say you've got to take day you. You've got to take days at a time. And sometimes when you're looking for the end goal, you don't know what to do. And life is a journey. And we're on a journey. You cannot control the past. We are in the present and the present will create the future. So from my perspective, it's really all about the journey. I don't have an end goal at the moment. So you just said a whole bunch of nothing. Okay. As for Paris's recent claim that he was using their family name to promote buying Beverly Hills, which came after he suggested he got effed at Hilton and Highland, Mauricio said their current family feud is sad. It's sad that she got so upset about that, but at the end of the day, it's two businessmen making two business decisions, Mauricio explained, also to Entertainment Tonight. I feel like I deserved something. I asked for something. He didn't want to do it, and then I chose to go off on my own. After being denied a partner position at Hilton and Highland, Mauricio started the agency. I made that decision just to go forward with this thing. There is certainly no bad blood on my side, he said of the past murkiness between him and Rick. Buying Beverly Hills season two began streaming on Netflix Friday, March 22nd. So will y'all be watching Buying Beverly Hills? It looks like you're going to get a little bit more information about the Kyle and Mauricio of it all over there. As I said, I'm going to check it out and we'll recap. Um, with my girl Stacy, and I will report back to y'all. All right, y'all, I'm about to get up, get out in the streets. Again, that was my alarm actually said. I thought I'd be out of here by then, but I'm about to get up, get out, but I will be back. Again, make sure you check out the episode, the podcast episode that just dropped with my boo, my sis, my homegirl, my Jersey sis, El Mirasaki. Um, if you want to listen to the audio version, you can find that wherever you listen to your podcast. If you want to listen and then watch to see our facials and things, um, you're already at YouTube. So just check out that video. Thank y'all so much again for watching. Again, I appreciate and love every single one of y'all for y'all support. I will talk to y'all later. See ya.